hey what's up coders welcome back to my channel uh, in today's video we will see more of ui related details um, of opacity widget animated opacity and how this property is used in various contexts to achieve these beautiful uis now to talk about the definition of an opacity uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward either it makes your child component transparent or opaque depending on the opacity value now when i say opacity value the range lies between zero to one now could we have anything more than that it's possible but it turns out to be expensive because it has to repaint your child into an intermediate buffer and that's expensive so let's stick on to the ideal values which is zero to one then moving on to the um, animated opacity now is it possible to have an opacity widget animated now i could just add a few animated properties to the existing opacity widget and i could achieve the same features as the other one now why we don't use that approach is that uh, it gets really expensive first thing why because it has to rebuild each frame for that particular duration so instead use animated opacity so what it does is it the opacity of the container is animated over a period of x seconds so if you want something to be animated you could use this animated opacity but if you just want either a color or a size of a container to change the opacity value then you could straightforward use an opacity widget so that's the slight difference and um, when to use opacity widget or animated opacity then moving on to the ui part um, i have here a, a very simple a main page uh, ui where you have uh, the one in the orange is the grid view with two columns and it's the same one here with the grid view with one column now the difference here is i've added opacity to each of these containers now the opacity is not added to the text or to the gradient it's added to the image so you find an image in every block and that's the one um, which has the opacity value now in my previous video also i have covered a couple of these opacity um, concept but I haven't gone in depth so i'll show you the various um, scenarios or the context where this opacity property was used so to start up with the first one i had um, created a video series related to backdrop filter uh, where it actually blurs your or give this glassy finish uh, to your container and for this i had used the op opacity property so here you could see I had used it for the container, for the icons, for the button. So even though the filter was available, it used the opacity property. So if you want to achieve a UI like this, you can definitely use them. And um, then moving on to the next UI, um, if you look at this, this is a main login screen or a sign up screen where you have images in the background and you have this gradient color and then you have this button and text appearing so in this case also there is an opacity property added to it but i have not created this ui i've just got them uh, to show you how this opacity value is used and then moving on to another one this was another cool looking ui that i found where uh, if you look at this um, container it's got this again a glossy finish which is not a dark background they have added an opacity property to it to give you this particular um, effect. So if you look at uh, another one such example is your splash screen. So most of the time, this is one of the commonly used um, places uh, where your opacity is used, where you have this background image and you have this icon or text which gets highlighted and this entire background has this opacity value. So if you look at uh, scenarios like this, um, most of your apps, at least one particular component or one particular section of your page or app contains this opacity value. It's just that we don't, uh, when we look at it for the first time, we don't observe it. So similar way, when you see this, it feels that the color is fading, but 
here you see this opacity added to it. So keeping that in mind, so let's move on with the implementation and see how I've used it and how you can create this beautiful UI. All right, so before I start with the implementation, I thought I would share a, a small tip with you, uh, which would be, uh, say for example, if you're displaying your app in your portrait mode, maybe you could use a grid view with this two column. And when you move on to the landscape mode, you would you could actually use the same thing in this fashion. So we will start with the implementation of this grid view with two count and then with very minimal changes, how you could transform this same design to this pattern. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So moving on to my editor. OK, so here I have a very simple bare bone flutter project with a scaffold app bar. And we will start with the body section. So in the body section, all I have is a grid view. So it's going to be a simple grid view uh, with the count property. And uh, since I, as I mentioned, I'm using a cross axis count of two. Cross axis count is two here. And then I'm going to add little properties like padding, uh, child aspect ratio, uh, axis spacing and the main axis spacing. So these are the four things that I'm adding so that I get a clear UI and I'll let you know what uh, these properties are. So first thing, uh, you know, the cross axis count is the number of columns padding. Child aspect ratio is if you want to have a custom height in your grid view, then you got to add this property. And you can vary these values to see how your height of your tiles or the grid view varies. Now the spacing is your spacing between your tiles or the spacing after each tile. So the spacing between your columns and the row. So that's the spacing. It's same as your staggered grid view spacing. Then moving on to the um, tiles, I'm going to use a children array. And then inside this is where I've defined my um, grid item. So instead of defining the entire grid inside it, I've defined a custom widget and I'm adding the details into it. And there I have defined my grid item structure. Custom grid, so let's pick up the details. So I think uh, the custom widget that I have defined is my grid item. And I have few properties like the grid name, grid image, color, and color tool. These two colors I'm using just for the gradient effect. And this is the image and this is the name. The name is the um, name that is available or that gets displayed. Um, this title that is either a Java developer or, or, or an iOS developer or a data science, that is the label. See, data is something which could be retrieved in any format. But once you have the data, how you display is what I'm showing you. So I have this. So let me quickly grab all the um, static data that I have and then show you the implementation of this particular function, which is the migrate item. All right. So moving on to my migrate item uh, definition, we can see that it has these properties inside it and uh, it has a container and the container has a box decoration. Now, why am I using a box decoration is that um, it allows me to add those gradient colors inside it and I've defined those colors here. So if you haven't watched my gradient video, I'll leave a link in the description. Please do watch it. I've added gradient in the app bar, sections, buttons. So I've shown you all the details. So please do watch it. And um, so after the decoration, I need the image and I need to add the text inside it. So for that, we will use uh, the stack widget because the text is appearing over the image. So first we will add the stack widget and inside the stack widget. So first, let me start with an children array. And then inside that I'm going to add. So the only property that I'm going to add is the opacity and I'm going to give it a 0.3. And then so the opacity is added to what the child is nothing but the um, it's a container. And inside the container, I'm adding the image. So it's got the decoration and the image details here. So let, let me quickly get those details. All 
Okay, so there you go. So it's got the circular radius, the decoration, and I'm using a network image, and the image value is picked up from this parameter, and that's the opacity property here. Then next, we are going to add a column widget so that we could add the text. So column widget is nothing but a simple combination of your containers. And um, so I'm going to quickly uh, get the code for it and I'll show you how it looks. Regarding the column widget, so if you see here, I've used a column widget and um, the inside uh, another container which holds uh, the main text and the subtext and I've added the properties um, whatever I've received from my parameters I'm just adding those values here so this is simple and now let me uh, quickly build this and show you how it looks now there you go so I have built this and uh, this is how it looks because I've used a grid view to count and this is crawlable and um, yeah now I'm going to use the same code and tweak uh, a little bit to show you how you could achieve the same code uh, same design and get this pattern so let's do that all right so now I have the same code now I'm going to tweak the code a little bit and show you what are the properties that I'm changing um, so that I could get that so first thing I'm going to change the cross axis count to one the moment I do that, you could see that it's changing. Now this is not the height that I want. So if you want to change the, if you want to custom the height of your grid view uh, tiles, you should uh, use um, the child aspect property. So I'm going to give a three. And the moment I do that, you could see the difference. So there you go. So you see, just by doing these two property changes, I was able to achieve the two column. So I could achieve this narrow design. Then next, I'm going to remove the spacing and I'm going to remove the rounded corners and I'm going to remove the padding so that it looks like all the tiles are merged with other. So let's play with those values. So I'm going to remove these two properties first. Then I'm going to remove the padding as well. And moving on to the grid item, think I have a circular border radius so I'm going to remove that one as well and the same property uh, circular border radius was given for the image so I'm going to remove that as well and so you can see just by removing few things you could transform one design which was a grid view into a um, another pattern with a single column and how the tiles seems to be merging so and also I've added the opacity value only to the image not to the entire container here so this is how you use the um, opacity property and achieve these kind of UI and um, yeah that's it for this video and if you do like it please give it a like and do subscribe and if you find this informative please do share it thank you